YouTube Kids is pushing gender and sexual confusion on young children. Disney Plus introduces radical racial ideology to their young audience. And the state of Florida is fighting back against both forms of indoctrination and taking heat for it. But as all argue, the pushback is well worth it. Our kids, our country is worth it. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use promo code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Thursday. Hope everyone has had a wonderful week so far. Wow, y'all are really loving, especially Monday and Tuesday's episodes. I've gotten a lot of good feedback from that, so thank you so much. Also got a lot of feedback from something that I said yesterday on um, on Instagram, which is something I've talked about a lot. I've talked about it. I even talked about it a little bit earlier this week, I think on Monday's episode, but it just tells me that you guys are really in need of encouragement right now. So like before we get into all the stuff that we're talking about today that you heard about on the top of the show, let me just give quick encouragement to tell you that... Um, it is okay to be confident and to be steadfast in what you know to be true. That doesn't mean that you have to pretend to know everything. That doesn't mean that you have to be certain about everything. It doesn't mean that you never admit when you're wrong or you made a mistake or when you just need to learn more about something. But when you know something is true, when you can hold fast to a stance because you know it's based on factual truth, you know it's based on biblical truth, you do not need to apologize for it. You don't need to caveat it. And you don't need to nuance it to the point where you're not even really saying anything. I've noticed that a lot of a lot of women, especially Christian women, and after I said this, a lot of people say, oh, this is men too. It's really kind of a generational thing. And someone also told me this actually comes from counseling culture today, that a lot of people are actually encouraged to speak like this. But that's, and so that's interesting. That could be an episode in and of itself. But this is what I hear a lot. That when someone says something that they know to be true, or they really believe, they will start by saying, I feel like, and then they'll end the sentence with, but I don't know. And that's the only real way they're comfortable in stating something, even if it's a fact. And I've noticed that a lot of people who are like that really are off put by people who are not like that. People who are not like that, who are certain in the things that they are certain in, um, they see as arrogant, they see as mean, they see as lacking empathy or lacking compassion or, or prideful or can never admit when they're wrong. No, those people are just certain about the things that they're certain about and they're not going to say sorry for it. Like if you have a problem with the substance of what someone says, then just say that. But if it's really just kind of these peripheral issues that maybe you didn't love their tone, hey, I didn't always, I don't always love Jesus's tone when I'm reading it in the Gospels or Paul's tone, but that's a me problem, right? The question is not whether that makes me feel good. The question is always, is that actually true? And so I, I just noticed with a lot of Christian women that they will call other women who are confident and who are certain and who are steadfast and things, they will say that they're mean or that they're unempathetic, or that they're just prideful or arrogant or whatever it is. No, that sounds, not always, not always, those could be legitimate criticisms in some cases, but that more sounds like a you problem. I Someone sent me a, a quote that their husband said to their kids is that uncertain people do not like certain people. So my encouragement to you um, is that if you feel like you're constantly getting blowback or just critiqued and nitpicked simply because you are confident in what you know is right, what you know is good and right and true, and like you feel intimidated by that sometimes, or you feel discouraged by that, or you start getting tempted to just be quiet or to just pretend like you're agnostic on things and like you don't really care, you don't really know because like that is how most women feel about things and you just kind of want to fit in and be friends with people and having strong opinions people will label you too intense or whatever it is just know like there are a lot of us out there that are the same way as you okay and we're in this together I understand like it is hard knowing the things that we know and caring about the things that we care about and having the beliefs that we do that is tough most people don't know and they don't care and when you know and when you care they slap all kinds of condescending labels on you but it's really to make themselves feel better 
Yes, we speak the truth in love and we can speak it with gentleness, but we are not responsible for other people's feelings about the true things that we say. Okay? And so stay strong. Don't stop speaking up. That's actually one way that Satan is describing him or uh, is, is disguising himself rather as an angel of light. Like he is using what I think is like a mallet of empathy to shut people up by convincing them that you are unempathetic or rude if you say that which is true. So don't be tempted by that. Like it's a burden to know and believe and to care about the things that we do, but it's a burden worth carrying. And um, again, you're not responsible for other people's insecurity because of their uncertainty. Don't pretend like you're not certain just because it makes other people feel comfortable. Like, girl, I have had, I have dealt with that like my whole life. There are very, there are few things that I'm certain on. I'm not certain about everything. I don't, there are a few things that I feel like I know a lot about and I care a lot about. There are a lot of things that I, I don't know anything about, but people are uncomfortable with any amount of confidence, with any amount of certainty. And you just have to stand strong knowing where your hope and where that truth and where that strength actually comes from. Um, all right. I just wanted to encourage you in that. I know that I'm going to get messages from y'all being like, that message was for me today. Well, I pray that it is. I pray that it is. And I just love y'all. And I know that all of us at Relatable are carrying that same burden. And that's why, that's why we're here together. That's why we're family y'all. Um, all right. I just also want to say, before we get into this, I'm going to read my first ad, then we'll get into that interview and the rest of it. But, um, this weekend, Super Bowl Sunday, there's going to be ads playing for the, he gets us campaign. And that is a campaign that I've talked about briefly talking about, you know, Jesus gets us because he was an activist. He was a refugee. He had fights with his family and all this stuff. And there are some things that I think that this campaign may be doing well. And I'm sure in some ways it has good motives, but there are a lot of ways that I think it gets it completely wrong when it comes to the gospel and who Jesus was and how we present people to Jesus. So after the ads play on Sunday, I want to talk about them on Monday and some of the things that I'm glad about when it comes to people who love Jesus trying to promote him in this way. And some of the things that I'm really concerned about when it comes to this particular campaign. So just a heads up, that's what we'll be analyzing as well as probably some other Super Bowl ads and some other things on Monday. Okay. Before we get into this interview, let me tell you about our first sponsor for the day. That is of course our friends at Good ranchers. All right. You know what would be an awesome Valentine's Day gift for your husband or for your boyfriend? It's Good Ranchers, a box of meat. Like maybe you've been thinking about subscribing to Good Ranchers, or maybe you just want to get one box of meat to test it out. This would be an amazing gift. It's all American meat. It's ethically raised, sustainably sourced. You can get all kinds of stuff. You got steak, different cuts of beef. You've got chicken, pre-marinated, non-pre-marinated chicken. You've got seafood. We have it all in our freezer. We have Good Ranchers. Every night of the week in our house, it makes life easier. I never have to get meat at the grocery store. Like that alleviates a lot of stress in my life. And it's one less thing that I have to think about at night. And I am all for things that make my life easier. It also makes sure that our dinners are healthy at night. And so it's just a win all around. Plus it's owned by Christian conservatives. So you can feel really good about sending your money there and you're supporting American farms and ranches. So just do it. Go to goodranchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout for $30 off off goodranchers.com promo code Allie at checkout for $30 off goodranchers.com code Allie. Aldo, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Before we get started, can you tell everyone who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name is Aldo Budazzoni. I am a personality at PragerU um, and I make conservative content. I do a lot of investigative journalism and reporting and yeah, it's me. Thanks and, so much for having me. Yeah, you had a tweet thread kind of go viral about how YouTube Kids is grooming children with LGBTQ plus propaganda. And your tw- your thread just kind of chronicles everything that you saw. But just tell us, how did you figure this out and what did you see? Yeah, so, Ali, it's no secret anymore that our society is sexualizing our kids in almost every way possible. Mm-hmm. And I've been documenting this a lot for the last couple months, whether it's the drag shows in public spaces. Um, You know, recently I did a thread on how Spotify is making pornography available to children, even with their safe filters on. 
So I really knew that how, how pervasive this was and I wanted to see how deep it went. So I went into YouTube kids and I made an account for nine to 12 year olds um, posing as a nine to 12 year old. And I was immediately bombarded with video after video about sexuality, gender, um, this LGBTQ programming, and even videos teaching children how to give consent. So it was really bizarre. And I just went down this rabbit hole not to see not only what, what YouTube was making available to these kids, but was actually curating specifically for them. Um, and it was completely inappropriate. And it was just, it was super bizarre. Yeah, you show that if, okay, so if you say that you're um, age 9 to 12, it says content recommended for kids ages 9 to 12. So again, you're not just talking about, okay, kids can look this up on YouTube Kids and they might stumble upon it if they're looking hard enough. No, this is actually what is primarily recommended to kids and it's a video about being a gender non-conforming person. And then there are a couple of just like normal, I don't know, silly videos, math videos. There's a girl power dance tutorial. But then more of the recommended stuff is about um, queer kids. And so this is a little kid, a little boy who is dressed as a girl with makeup. That in of itself is weirdly perverted and sexualization of a child. Then they've got this Nickelodeon um, pride advertisement with this very scary drag looking monster person and then all kinds of videos basically telling kids that it's okay to not just be confused about your gender but to hate who you are and to change your body and to change your identity based on those feelings i mean this is indoctrination for all the people that say that this is a trend that's just totally organic no this is actually being groomed and brought into children's minds via media via school all different kinds of avenues a hundred percent and it's it's really predatory uh you know, the the host of this Queer Kids Stuff show, Lindsay Amer, she did a TED Talk. And in this TED Talk, she says things like, you know, I get all these questions of if it's okay to talk to children at these ages, even three to four and up is what she says. And she says it's not confusing, that they have the capacity to understand this. But in that first video that you brought up, the the kids meet a gender nonconforming person, in that video, the kids say exactly that, that they're confused when this non-binary person is you know, spouting off at them about what it means to be non-binary and blah, blah, blah. The kids literally say in the video, I am confused. This is a very confusing thing. And so there's something very predatory about mm -hmm. taking the inquisitive, intuitive nature of a ch child mm -hmm. and replacing it with this manufactured social justice based wisdom. Uh, it's really predatory. And like you said, a grooming in the most fundamental sense of the word. Yeah, the difference between men and women, boys and girls, it really just comes naturally to kids. And I realized this even more so when I had kids of my own and I have toddlers and they without us teaching them, they can tell the difference between men and women. And that's actually something that I've realized is very important to their development, because to kids, like as you said, they are naive. And so the world is very complex and confusing and big and chaotic to them. And so they are literally always trying to make categories of people and things in order to make their world make more sense and to make their world smaller. And one of the most important categories just for understanding themselves, understanding the world, and even for their own safety are the categories of male and female. And there are some signifiers that kids naturally use in their own mind to say, okay, this is what a man looks like. This is what a woman looks like and here are the differences between mommy and daddy grandma and grandpa and all of those things when you rob kids of those categories you are not just sending them into confusion in this area but i imagine that you're actually really hurting like their emotional development in a lot of ways and their understanding of their own bodies and all of life i mean i can't even uh, i can't even imagine the mental health issues that this is going to cause long term in the kids in whom we are sowing so much confusion yeah, totally. You know, like you said, kids are like wet cement, right? What you what you put on them makes a very deep imprint. Um, and every kid has a normal childhood because they have no frame of reference. They have no semblance of what is normal. And so when you put this these things in front of them, and you strip them of the, of their intuition of what they they baseline you know feel and know is correct, um, you create a new normal. And that's why you're seeing I think it's Gen Z. One in five of them identify as as part of the LGBTQ community. Yeah. And so th this isn't just a result of acceptance. This is a a function of this indoctrination of this grooming, um, and it's plain as day when you when you look at the numbers. And why? Would adults, especially like I'm looking at this queer kids YouTube channel, 
where this woman is platforming this man who dresses up like a woman who I guess is, um, I don't know, a drag queen or something. And the title of the video is It's Okay to Be Gay. Tell me why adults like this want an audience of children. Like, why are they purposely seeking after little kids to talk about subjects involving genitalia and sexuality and sexual attraction that in of itself is kind of a red flag to me as a parent a hundred percent well they they frame it as 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 education or as entertainment and it's the same thing that you see in in public schools when they want to show pornographic things to children well it's educational it's entertaining or when you see the drag shows it's it's entertaining it's educational and again this is all being done under the banner of of lgbtq or of of gay pride and of gay rights because they know that anybody that that fights out against it will be labeled as homophobic or or this or that these hateful labels and it's it really goes deeper into this this whole wave in america of of tolerance and acceptance um and you're having groomers and predators co-opting this this to- total acceptance and this total tolerance movement to get away with grooming and to get away with with predatory behavior in plain sight because we've gotten so numb and we've gotten so like i said accepting of everything um that it's even including stuff like this uh and it's it's predatory yeah one thing that you see this group push so hard and it sounds so innocuous and it sounds even virtuous is consent 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 Mm. consent and of course we want people to understand that sex one day when you're adult needs to be consensual and of course that is an aspect of understanding safety and understanding morality but you ask the question like what exactly are they teaching nine-year-olds to consent to because no matter if a nine-year-old says yes to some kind of advance by a predator that consent does not count so i've always thought that this consent-based morality is really flimsy because if consent is a simple yes then what is stopping these predators from saying well a child is technically consenting to something and so it was fine like we've got to have other moral boundaries in addition to consent to decide what's right and wrong and so I do think that this is weird, that this is such a big subject that they are pushing on little nine-year-old kids. And I think your question is good. What exactly are you teaching them to consent to? Yeah, exactly. Well, like I said before, they're, they're doing this under the guise of education and they want to they want to teach kids that you can say yes or no to playing with someone's toy or trading your lunch. But th- this is deeper and it goes into the big P word um, and it's 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 predatory but you know they're they're trying to run these two ideas concurrently and you see this with the the children transition surgeries you're seeing this with uh, the queer literature in school one idea is that children have sexuality and the other one is that they have agency and they can give consent Mm -hmm. and so what is the only logical conclusion that you can run when you're running those two ideas that kids have can can give consent and kids have sexuality right there's only one logical conclusion and it's it's pretty easy to see where that leads when you put them up like that but that's exactly what they're trying to to usher in here yeah and you pointed out billboard chris he's a dad who goes around and he interviews people and just talks to them about like the danger of puberty blockers and maiming and mutilating children in the name of quote unquote gender confirmation and one of the conversations that he had with someone who opposed him was someone who was like sure 12 year olds can consent to sex why couldn't they and of course you and i know that that is immoral and wrong but from their perspective as you said if they believe okay it's possible for kids to be these sexual beings and it's possible for get for kids to give consent to these kind of things and by the way they're pushing basically pornography in these schools again in the name of education and through media that is the only logical conclusion i mean really what is stopping them from just fully saying sure an adult can have a relationship with a child how does this end up any other way totally yeah and and like i've said you know if there's one thing if a, if a child is of sexual age and they're 18 or above and they decide of whatever sexuality they want you know there's nothing we can do about that but what we're doing and what society is doing is they're taking these underdeveloped children and they're assigning them these sexualities before they even have time to process basic human functions and get through puberty and get through anything in their life. Um, and, and what you're seeing with this whole YouTube Kids things is they are aiding 
uh, in this, uh, in this grooming, in this predation. Uh, and it's, it's really scary to see because YouTube is such a big entity and our public school systems. And it's just these children are being hit, Ali, from every single angle. And it is a constant barrage. And, you know, I, I really feel for these kids because they are being preyed upon. And when you see stuff like this in YouTube or in public spaces, the drag shows or this queer literature in schools, you know, it, it seems hopeless because they're being hit so hard from every angle. Um, and it's just yeah. they're innocent and they deserve to be protected from this stuff. All right. Quick pause to tell you guys about Epic Will. So I know no one wants to talk about death, but it's inevitable for all of us. For those of us who are believers, it's not the it's not the tragedy that it is for a lot of people because we have hope. We have hope in the next life, but we do want to make sure that we are leaving behind um a legacy for our kids that they are taking care of in the best way possible. And in order to do that, you got to have a will. You got to have a will. I know at our age, it's not something that you want to think about or worry about, but it is something you need to think about or worry about because we just don't know what tomorrow holds. And I know it can be confusing, lawyers, fees, all the paperwork and things like that. You don't know what the heck to do. That's why Epic Will exists. This is a company that makes it easy and affordable for anyone to get a will. In as little as five minutes at $119, you can have a complete will package from Epic Will. $119 is nothing compared to the safety and security that you are getting from having a complete will. Plus, if you're a single mom and you've got a kid or kids under the age of 18 in your home, you can get a will for free from Epic Will. That's just a part of their heart, a part of their mission. They really care about single moms. So make sure to take advantage of that deal if that's you. For everyone else, $119, five minutes. Go to epicwill.com slash Allie, A-L-L-I-E. You'll save 10% on your complete will package. So it's already affordable, but you'll save 10% with my link, epic, E-P-I-C, will.com slash Allie, epicwill.com slash Allie. No one except a child's parent has the right to talk to kids about gender and sexuality. I know that there are some teachers and that there are some activists out there who think that they are creating some kind of safe space, that they are educating children um, in spite of their bigoted parents who just want to keep them sheltered, but no one has the right to talk to kids about sex, gender, sexuality, all of those things which involve intimate parts of your body, except that child's parents. And it's very, very disgusting and off-putting, disturbing, worrying, worrisome for me that there are so many adults that are adamant about that and that are actually willing to fight for that and that they're not even maligned in the media. They're actually glorified, I think, uh, in a lot of ways. And obviously, we're seeing this in a very overt way when it comes to uh, the drag queen story hour and the drag queen performances that are happening in front of kids. And you went to drag night at the L.A. Zoo, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think we have a clip of that. I think we have a clip that we can play, and then I'll get you to comment on it. So, Valora Von Tees, is That's that your name? Me, yes. And what were you doing out here tonight at the LA Zoo? Living my life, God <laughs> it. Yes, absolutely. It was LA Pride, so we just showed up, and we just thought we'd give the children a little something, a little something to snack on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Earlier in the night, you said that there was nothing sexually charged about this event. This is not a sexual charge. Do you stand by that? Please don't film me right now. That's not the nature of this event. Okay, so they're just in denial. Obviously, for those just listening to this and not watching this, I mean, we saw the guy wearing basically a thong and a corset. You interviewed him. He said, this is, we're giving children something to snack on. Like, again, I will say there is no innocent reason for a man to want to wear skimpy clothing and dance in front of children. There is no non-predatory, non-pedophilic reason for that. Were you stunned by what you saw? 
You know, I I wish I was. I've been covering these events for a while, so it, it I I've been jaded at this point. Yeah. But like you just saw, they are telling us what they're doing, right? And and we can't we can't sit by anymore and say, well, we didn't know. They're telling us, and we need to believe them. Like you said, this is predatory, plain and simple. And what you saw from the director of equity programming uh, and the director of communications, I asked them before and after, and they were more offended by my asking the question, "Is this a family friendly event?" than they were with grown men stripping in front of children. And I think that says a lot. Like you said, what what reason do do grown men need to be dressed in women's clothing and stripping in front of kids? And these weren't kids that were just six and seven. There were toddlers there, and that's how they advertised this at the LA Zoo. They sold tickets to two years old and younger. Yeah. And if it doesn't get crazier than that, Allie, it was ridiculous. Yeah, the, so the woman that you spoke to, as you said, is LA Zoo's director of equity programs, equity. It's amazing what falls under that umbrella. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to get your reaction to this, too, because it's not just sexuality that these media companies and entities, corporations are exposing kids to. It's also the craziness of racial division and racial hatred. And I saw that uh, Disney Plus is rebooting the Proud Family. I think the Proud Family originally came out when I was when I was little and now they're rebooting it, but they are putting an activist spin on it. And so this video was going viral on Twitter um, and it's interesting. Let's play it and then I'll get your reaction. This country was built on slavery, which means slaves built this country. Tilled this land from sea to sea to sea. First it was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Whitney did his thing and cotton became king. And we were its soldiers. Four million strong. Fighting for America's freedoms, even though we remained America's slaves. slaves. Built this country. The descendants of slaves continue to build this. Slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering. And continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the systemic prejudice, racism, and white, white supremacy that America was founded with and still has not atoned for. Slaves built this country. As we celebrate Juneteenth for the umpteenth time, our account is still outstanding. Because this country was built on slavery, which means slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. And we demand our 40 acres and a mule. I mean, this is disgusting, honestly. Like, who does who does this help? Like, when I am thinking about some of the issues that are facing the black community, I was listening to a podcast. It's called Souls of Story. And I saw this study statistic, or I heard it. And they said that 82% of black fourth graders in this country can barely read. They're reading at a kindergarten level. And so we know some of the issues and some of the disparities that are facing black Americans today that have nothing to do with with slavery that occurred 200 years ago and don't even have to do with some of the prejudices and some of the systemic discrimination that actually did exist about a century ago have nothing to do with that. So tell me how this kind of propaganda is helping the people who are actually hurting in America today. Right. Well, first of all, for a family called Proud, they seem more cynical than anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, there is a, a unlimited amount of things in our past that we can be shamed about or that we can be discouraged about, but there is equally as many things that we can be proud of. And despite the fact that what they're saying is just not true, the fact that we you know, brought those slaves over um, for people that had that were in the slave trade in Africa anyway, um, like I said, there is unlimited amount of things in, in America in our past that we can be proud of. And does a lot more for us going forward than it does for us to be sad about about the shameful things in the past. But, um, you know, it's funny because Disney used to play pro America commercials. I remember I saw this commercial from 2005 Disney that they were saying, you know, I'm proud to be American. We're a United States. And I think, like you said, if you're if you want to build a, a good future for yourself, it does a lot more for you to say, that we are United States and that you know, we need to move forward and we need to be proud of our past to, to, to go uh, you know, into our future. And so yeah. for them to feed kids this negativity and this hatred really only does bad things for the children. Um, and it's, it's just really, it's really gross. Yeah, it just fosters anger and bitterness and resentment that really it doesn't help black kids. It doesn't help white kids. It doesn't help immigrant kids. Any group of kids in this country, it doesn't actually help. All it does is just make things worse and more divided. And by the way, that rendering of history is not is, is not objective. Yes, those things happened. But the argument is that those things that happened are 
are, are what is driving some of the poor outcomes for minorities today. And that is highly debatable. Obviously, Thomas Sowell, Walter Williams, they've written many books about this, basically debunking this idea that this long legacy of slavery is what is still inhibiting black Americans today. There are a lot of different factors in that. But of course, when you elevate black voices, you're not allowed to elevate Thomas Sowell or Walter Williams or Ben Carson or any of those people. It's only the anger and the vitriol from people like Nicole Hannah-Jones that apparently we're supposed to glorify. Um, I'm worried about this next generation of kids, Aldo. I mean, the things that they are being fed, the things that is that are being pushed on them, even as they are not even really being taught how to read, how to write, and how to do math. I mean, tell me, what is it going to look like when these chickens come home to roost in 20 years? It, it is a scary picture that's uh, that we're seeing in front of us right now. But honestly, genuinely, I feel like God, uh, God is good, and and He will. He will take care of this country if we keep fighting for him and we keep proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ um, and, and we just keep him in our hearts and, and keep fighting for him. Um, but it's it's scary. We're definitely fighting a, an important battle. Um, but I'm, I am hopeful despite all this stuff, Allie. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's good. We have to be hopeful or else we just become cynical, like the people that we just listened to. And you're right. We know who wins in the end. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as Hebrews 13, 8 says, even as the world changes. And so that is our anchor. And that is our strength. And look, the history of the church for the past 2000 years has been being a refuge for the most vulnerable, namely children. And we have to continue to do that. And you are doing that by exposing a lot of the corruption that we're seeing. So thank you for that. Um, where can people follow you and find your work? Yeah, you can find me on all social medias at Aldo Budazoni, just my name. And you can find me on PragerU, my man on the street videos. We're going to be releasing a couple this month, so make sure to follow me there. Okay, thanks so much, Aldo. I appreciate it. Thanks, Allie. Okay, we've got more to talk about, but first let me tell you about our next sponsor, and that is My Patriot Supply. There's a lot of instability, a lot of unknown with the future. I mean, eggs are like a million dollars right now. What's going to happen when all of our food is that expensive and we just can't afford to get the food that we need to feed our family? You need an emergency food supply. Should things get so expensive that it's out of control or should things really hit the fan and we don't have access to food? It's just better to be safe than sorry. And that's why I love My Patriot Supply. Their three-month emergency food supply kit is great for you and your family. Buy one kit for every member of your family and then you'll be good for those three months. Like, don't you just want to have that? that safety and security. I mean, hopefully you'll never have to use it, but just stow it away in your pantry. It's good for 30 years. We're talking about really nutritious and good tasting meals, and it just makes sure that you and your family are taken care of while you need it. Right now, you'll get $200 also with your order in free survival gear. That's awesome. $200 in free survival gear with each kit that you order. So go to mypatriotsupply.com. You'll get that $200 worth of free survival essentials with your three-month emergency food kit. Again, get one kit for everyone in your family. My, MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com. Okay, so one a uh, state that we continually see push back on the stuff that I was just talking about with Aldo, especially when it's in schools, is the state of Florida. That's what I love about, about uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, that he is not afraid to push back on this stuff. And if there are any two things that I think most Republicans are scared to get into and scared to oppose, it's the sexual stuff and it's the race stuff, because those are hot button social culture war issues that a lot of I think people in power Republicans in power just think are losing issues for them it's too controversial they don't want the backlash especially the LGBTQ lobby when you try to push back against them I mean there's typically hell to pay and yet Governor DeSantis has done it he's even gone against Disney for the sake of that I mean you'll remember the parental rights and education bill which was a very straightforward bill like a very simple, obvious, innocuous bill that is now a law, thank the Lord, that basically just said, look, kindergarten through third grade, you cannot give formal classroom instruction about changing your gender or sexuality 
to six to nine year olds. So sorry. Okay, it wasn't even K through 12, which I would have been great with. Just K through third grade. And literally Disney had a conniption. All of the LGBTQ activists, not just in the state, but around the country were like, what? We cannot talk about chopping off genitalia to five-year-olds? Oh my goodness. My life is over. It just tells you a little bit about the mission of some of these activists. And this is not, I'm not saying LGBTQ people. There are plenty of LGBTQ people who are against that kind of indoctrination in schools who do not want to talk to kids about that kind of stuff. But the activist class, the politicians, the political class, the corporate class, they very much want to talk to kids about that kind of thing. And it's not just the sexuality. It's also the racial division that we just played in that clip from Disney Plus. And you've probably seen some of this, that Florida, that Governor DeSantis is getting a lot of blowback for what the left is saying, basically getting rid of black history in schools. And that's just not true. So there are multiple parts of this story. Some of it has to do with what's happening in colleges in the state of Florida, and some of it has to do with what's happening in K through 12 in the state of Florida. So this is according to Axios. Axios says the College Board on Wednesday released curriculum for its new Advanced Placement African American Studies course, excluding some of the content that infuriated Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The curriculum does not require teaching on topics including Black Lives Matter or the case for reparations, two topics that were opposed by DeSantis. So DeSantis publicly opposed these things, said, you know, we're not going to have them in our public school system. The College Board is now saying, okay, these are optional topics for this course, but they're not mandatory teaching. The reparations debates in the U.S. slash the Americas is listed um, as a sample project topic on the curriculum, but it is not a required lesson plan, nor is it part of the final exam. The curriculum on slavery, reconstruction, and the civil rights movement remains relatively unchanged in the curriculum. The Florida State Board of Education in DeSantis earlier this month tried to block the new AP course, telling the college board that it is contrary to Florida law and significantly lacks educational value. Okay, so the Florida State Board of Education they did not want they did not want this course because before this call before the college board made these changes it was basically teaching the tenets of critical race theory and the tenets of critical race theory are that fundamentally america is a systemically racist country that it was built on slavery not just that slavery was a part of its founding or its being built but that it was built on slavery and that that um, prejudice and that that racism that first founded and then perpetuated slavery is still alive and well today and is the cause of all of the racial disparities between black Americans and white Americans today. That is essentially what critical race theory believes and basically asserts that there has been no real advancement, no real legal advancement um, away from slavery to today. They would argue that there's just been this long line of slavery, uh, this long thread of unbroken discrimination that has oppressed black people, kind of as I mentioned when I was talking to Aldo. That is a theory. That is a radical theory. That's not actually based on fact. That is a subjective um, academic theory that has been debated for a long time that should not be accepted as objective truth and should not be taught as objective truth in the classroom. So I think the state of Florida and Governor DeSantis is actually is absolutely right in pushing back against that. So DeSantis said, according to Axios, uh, that the course violates a Florida law that bans instruction that defines people as oppressed or privileged based on their race. That is another part of critical race theory that it says that black and brown people are part of an oppressed class, no matter their socioeconomic class, no matter what rights and privileges that they have in white people, no matter what socioeconomic class or rights or privileges or disadvantages they have are a part of the oppressor class. And Florida law says, no, we're not we're not doing that. That's not what you're going to teach kids, which, again, I think is good because that's not an objective reality. That might be a misinformed opinion that you have, but that shouldn't be taught inside the classroom. 
Uh, civil rights attorney Ben Crump. Ben Crump, he's everywhere. Oh, he loves the spotlight. Uh, accused the state of violating the federal and state constitutions and threatened to sue if it did not reach an agreement with the college board to reinstate the course. On Tuesday, DeSantis unveiled a proposal to revamp the state's higher education system intended to elevate intellectual freedom and push back against indoctrination. The proposed reforms would prohibit critical race theory and diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and ensure that the Florida's public universities and colleges are grounded in the history and philosophy of Western civilization, which I think is good. The AP course is currently being piloted in 60 schools across the country with plans to expand it to hundreds more in the fall, the Washington Post reported. But as of now, it's still not going to be in the state of Florida. So even after the changes that they made um, because of Florida's criticism, it's still not going to be apparently right now in the state of Florida. Um, Maybe if there are more changes, they'll reopen that discussion. The Florida Department of Education is is saying, but um, it's not going to be in schools right now. Does that mean that schools are not going to be able to teach the history of black Americans in the United States, that they're not going to be able to talk about slavery, that they're not going to be able to talk about Reconstruction or Jim Crow? No, that's not what this means. It's just that they believe that there's not enough educational value in this particular course and that it's too divisive and too um, too uh, much like activism rather than education to be in Florida schools. And I appreciate him taking this stand. Look, it only causes resentment. It only causes division. It doesn't teach real history. And honestly, people equating the tenets of critical race theory with actual history of black Americans. That's really sad to me. Because we can talk about the rich tapestry of American history with all of its different kinds of people without employing this radical academic theory that really has nothing to do with fact and everything to do with the feelings of a few intellectuals who decided upon this theory a few decades ago, like Derek Bell. Um, And so we don't need to be teaching things like that. And by the way, teachers aren't even equipped to teach that stuff properly. Like if you can't teach the history of black Americans without employing the tenets of critical race theory, then you're not a good teacher and you should just quit. You're not equipped to do your job well. And why would you want to carry that burden, by the way? Why would you want to carry that burden of telling white kids that they have white privilege and black kids that they're actually oppressed and they're actually marginalized? Why do you want to be a part of pulling them apart and holding them back like that? You don't want to you don't want to carry that burden and bear that responsibility. Don't you just want to teach the facts? And so I appreciate this is kind of a way to, I think, protect not just students, but also teachers in the state of Florida. And then as that Axios article also mentioned, DeSantis um, says that CRT and DEI are Florida's red line for public universities and colleges. And uh, his response to the question on how the budget would be affected said spending on both DEI and CRT would be prevented and that the two concepts were essentially a red line in Florida saying lawmakers would work to make those proposals the law of the land in the coming March legislative session. And so that's good. I mean, diversity, equity and inclusion programs, again, are not based on fact. They're not helping anyone. They're not lifting anyone up. And in fact, in the name of equity, it's bringing everyone down to the lowest common denominator. It's the soft bigotry of low expectations that has never helped any minority or non-minority in this country. We should be awarding competence. We should be awarding merit. And that's how we promote excellence. And that's how institutions run well, period. I happen to think that people of all skin colors can meet those standards and that they should be awarded for doing so. So I appreciate how uh, Florida continually leads the way in this kind of stuff and how he just takes the hits from the media and now from freaking Donald Trump. I'm sure you've seen some of that stuff that Donald Trump is saying. And he just stays steadfast. Ron DeSantis just stays steadfast in all of this. And he does a really good job, I think, of picking and choosing his battles. And so I just continue to applaud his courage. And I know that there are a lot of other governors who are going to do the same thing. I'm hopeful that Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to be a similar kind of leader in the state of Arkansas and other Republicans in other states as well. Um, All right. Let me tell you about our next sponsor for the day. And that is NetSuite. All right. Uh, NetSuite is really important if you are a business owner because it gives you the visibility and control you need to make better decisions 
faster. For the first time in NetSuite's 22 years as the number one cloud financial system, you can defer payment of a full NetSuite implementation for six months if that's something that you need. So that's no payment or no interest and no interest for six months. You can take advantage of this special financing offer today. It's the number one cloud financial system because they give your business everything that you need in real time all in one place to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, increase productivity across every department. If you've been sizing NetSuite up to make the switch, then you know this deal is unprecedented. No interest, no payments. Take advantage of this special financing offer at netsuite.com slash alley. That's net, S-U-I-T-E dot com slash alley to get the visibility and control you need to weather any storm. Netsuite.com slash alley. Okay, the last thing that I want to end on, because I've been wanting to talk about this and I just haven't been able to, I just want to emphasize that the divisive conversation and the um, the the conversation about race that is not actually based on fact, but is based on radical left ideology that purports things like white privilege and white oppressors and black oppressed and the problem of whiteness and systemic racism. All of these things, again, are part of an academic theory. They're not actually based on fact. All of these actually have consequences in real life. There was this horrible hate crime story, of course. Most of you probably haven't even heard about it because it's not the right it's not the right racial makeup for the media to care about it. But this is according to Daily Mail. Daily Mail does tend to kind of cover these things. Um, this is the headline. Interest, da- Daily Mail always has like, the most interestingly worded headlines from February 3rd, mixed race accountant accused of mowing down California doctor 58 while saying white privilege slurs. And he also wrote rambling posts about ethnicity and religion on Facebook, claiming there is no higher race and blasting grudges, malice, separation and hate. And so Dr. Michael uh, Mamone, he was uh, an emergency room doctor at Providence Mission Hospital in Laguna Beach. He was um, killed a couple weeks ago by a name, by a guy, uh, by a guy by the name of Van Roy Evans Smith. He was an accountant from Long Beach, and he just decided randomly that these two people didn't even have a relationship. Van Roy Evans Smith, again, was black. Michael Mamone was white. And Van Roy Evans Smith decided allegedly to... Um, um, run into the back of Dr. Mamone as he was riding his bike, run him over. Then he got out and just started stabbing him and he stabbed him to death. According to Daily Mail, he was also holding a BB gun when he approached Mamone, a father of two, and was screaming racial slurs about white privilege. Smith was restrained by passersby until sheriffs arrived and arrested him. Good for the passersby. A lot of people don't want to interact um, with that. And so this guy was killed by someone who had talked about on Facebook, had talked about pri- or uh, had talked about previously the dangers of white privilege, the dangers of systemic racism. And then he literally went out and murdered a white guy minding his business while screaming about white privilege. This again reminds me of that story out of South Carolina that Once again, most people don't even know about a black family that adopted this white daughter and ended up beating her to death, uh, abused her to death. And this mom had talked about on social media the dangers of white privilege, how her black kids don't have the same privilege that her adopted white kids do and why that's so bad. So I don't know, maybe like we should stop blaming everything on whiteness. I don't know. Like, have we ever considered that? Like, have we ever just considered that we should stop blaming white people alive today for the atrocities of the past? Have we thought about how maybe that's irrational and that builds a kind of hate and division that hurts us all? It doesn't elevate black people at all, by the way. It just hurts everyone. Like, have you ever thought Christian organizations who claim to be building bridges that maybe we should stop blaming everything on whiteness And that maybe that's more bullying than bridge building. Maybe that's causing a lot of the problems that we face today. We're not actually bringing any solutions to the table, that it's actually just perpetuating a lot of hate and even justifying some violence that, again, isn't covered by most people in the media. So, yeah, of course, I am for Governor DeSantis pushing back against this stuff for the safety and the well-being of everyone. 
And the same thing when it comes to the sexual indoctrination of kids. Because I care about the bodies and the lives and the minds and the hearts of children, and because I think it is the responsibility of adults to protect children's innocence and to protect them from predation, like I think that we all have a responsibility to expose this stuff and to stand up against it. Like we all say, oh, we want a more unified world. We want a more loving world. Like we want less hate. We want our kids to be compassionate. And then we push this kind of crap into their minds. Come on, we can do better than that. But this, of course, is the consequence of godlessness. When you let go of God, you start to abandon any concept of truth, any concept of true love. You become irrational. You become partial in your judgments. And worst of all, you really become wicked. And wickedness always preys upon the most vulnerable children because they're malleable. It always has. It's a tale as old as time. And it's actually our responsibility as Christians to stand up against that and be a refuge of both clarity and courage and strength for the most vulnerable. So that's why we talk about this stuff as controversial as um, as it may be. All right. That's all we've got time for today. We will be back here on Monday after the Super Bowl. And we'll have lots to talk about then. Have a great weekend.